Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Erewash series. Erewash is one of the nine subdivisions of the county of Derbyshire. There are 14 civil parishes within it. Let's see which one we're in today. Today in Erewash, I've got one for you with a huge population. This one is very, very, very much residential. Although there is a village centre, which is over there. Look at that little car park you can see underneath this yellow um, entranceway. That's where this walk is going to end. But first, we're going to walk through all those housing estates and see what we can find. There are some landmarks in those housing estates, believe it or not. But generally speaking, this one is all about being residential. It's West Hallam. This Erewash episode is sponsored by Past Days, a family history blog by June Terrington. You'll find a link in the description. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. West Hallam is a large residential village close to Ilkeston in the county of Derbyshire. It's one of many places in Erewash to bear the name Hallam. The other settlements locally with that name include Kirk Hallam, which we briefly caught a glimpse of last week, Little Hallam and the Hallam Fields area of Ilkeston. This, however, is the only Hallam to have its own parish council. The others are all unparished areas save for the tiny section of Kirk Hallam, which belongs to Dale Abbey. The village is overwhelmingly residential. Its near 5,000 population live on a series of housing estates to the north of the original village, which are all interconnected by an intricate labyrinth of footpaths. Here's one such path. Until the early 20th century, West Hallam was nothing but a small rural village and the property of the Newdigate family. Most jobs were either in agriculture or in mining. How quickly times have changed. These days, West Hallam is a commuter settlement with many people living here working in Ilkeston, Derby, Nottingham or further afield during the day. West Hallam used to have a railway station, which was connected to the Great Northern Railway and Derby Friargate station. These days, Ilkeston is the nearest station for commuters. It's not known exactly when the village was founded, but we do know it existed at the time of the Doomsday Book. It didn't really expand though until the collieries in the area disappeared. That almost goes against what we're used to. Normally, a colliery sees a place rapidly expand. However, West Hallam was predominantly the site used for colliery spoil tips. When these were removed and landscaped and after much open cast coal extraction, the area regained its traditional rural appeal from the 1970s onwards. And that led to a massive increase in housing, with most of the village being built between the 1970s and the 1980s, and the population soared as a result. Ever since then, the village has continued to grow, but make no mistake about it, it still has links to its past if you know where to look. Here on St Wilfred's Road, there's a potential clue in the form of a bungalow. Now here on St Wilfred's there's a house there called Windmill Bungalow. I wonder if there was a mill here at some point. One of present day West Hallam's more notable places is the Bottle Kiln, which can be seen off St Wilfred's Road between these two houses. More on that shortly. 
First, we need to emerge onto the A609, the major road running to the village's north. It's known as High Lane, and it's where we find a small war memorial. There's a larger one later. The Bottle Kiln is the site of the former West Hallam Pottery, which once had two such kilns and was virtually derelict for many years. Now renovated, it's an arts and craft gallery, a cafe, and a Japanese-style tea garden and gift shop. And next door to that is a Methodist church, and I noticed something on the fence outside here. West Hallam, it would appear, runs a food bank, which for a village of its size and relative affluence was a little unexpected. Regardless, Friday is the day for it between 10 and 2. Our journey continues down Highgate West, which runs all the way to Station Road before becoming Belper Road. At that junction, there's a garage, which is called Millhouse Garage. Longest part of the route this, High Lane. I could walk all the way to the end, but I'm not going to. There's another footpath which comes off this and heads down towards Hallam Way where we'll catch some more residential areas of the village. A little walk around that will take us to one of the two recreation grounds. We've got a school to see yet as well. The other recreation ground comes after that. And then we've got a church before we finish off in the middle of the village. Now, whilst a lot of people work away from West Hallam these days, it does have a large employer. That would be TDG Pinnacle, which is sited on an industrial estate to the south of the village. That's one area I couldn't access because it's gated. It used to be a World War II Army Ordnance Depot and it's off Cat and Fiddle Lane. It's originally reopened in the 1960s as Midland Storage. The place seems to me, at least, to be a lovely place to live. Its semi-urban nature means it's got everything you need. Even this bin man agrees. Double thumbs up for West Hallam. Our route is almost done with these housing estates. I worried before walking around here that this was going to be a bit of a boring one being generally residential, but it's not been though. Here we have the West Hallam Community Centre on Station Road. This is one of a number of local halls and meeting facilities. There's a preschool based at this one. Speaking of the younger West Hallam residents, they are all well served here. This is the first of the two recreation grounds on Station Road, which is right next to West Hallam Community Centre. Okay, I'd say we're probably about three quarters of the way around West Hallam now. Even though it's residential, it's not been boring, has it? There's been plenty of differing housing styles and there's some more here as well. We're heading south now towards the other recreation area and the school. West Hallam has historically been associated with three names, Scargill, Poutrell and Newdigate. The Newdigate family were lords of the manor and on Station Road is ye olde Cinder House. This was built in 1833 to celebrate the birth of Francis Parker Newdigate, the local squire's son. It was built from cinders which were made by burning pieces of clay. These were dug from the nearby Mapley Park in Mapley. The date and initials of the squire's son are visible under the eaves of the house in different colours of stone. It reads FN and 1833. I thought I was never going to find one of these, but here's a parish notice board at last. Let's go check out Beach Lane Recreation Ground next. This building is the Poutrell Community Pavilion. West Hallam Junior Football Club play here, although they were established in 1886 as a senior club. West Hallam no longer has a senior team. At the time of filming, I believe there to be only two recreational spaces in the village. However, my sources tell me there are in fact four. Now, given what time of day it is at the moment, the kids are all out in the playground here at Scargill Church of England Primary School. So this will be done as quick as I can, just walking past like this, as opposed to standing outside with the camera. I don't want anyone levying any accusations at me. Really would not be good. Okay, time to head for the centre of the village. That name, Scargill, is another name of note as far as West Hallam is concerned. The school is named for John Scargill, as is Scargill Road, which we walked up earlier. John Scargill was a rector of West Hallam. Born in 1588, he would leave the bulk of his property as an educational endowment for both the village and the adjoining villages. On School Square is one of the old school buildings. Built in 1832 as the third generation of the school, the panel above the doorway is dated 1758, having been transferred from an older building. As well as Scargill's charity established in 1662, which is still going strong, locals also benefit from the Anne Poutrell Foundation and the West Hallam Trust. 
Here's the village hall, which would appear to be another old school building built in almost the same style. Scargill has a blue plaque dedicated to him on the side of this building. Now we're at the entrance to St Wilfred's Church, one of the oldest buildings in West Hallam, and one that'll give us a nice view of the Erewash countryside. Let's check it out. Well, this is certainly the most interesting part of the village, isn't it? It's definitely the oldest part. You tell by the buildings, all the residential areas we see at the beginning of this video, they're all fairly new. Been there quite a, a while, I know, but certainly not as uh, long as these in the center of the village. We're walking up towards St. Wilfred's Church now, passing a little uh, graveyard here, a little cemetery, and the church is up this, not very steep, it has to be said, hill. St Wilfred's Church is over 700 years old. In the 16th and 17th centuries, West Hallam had a reputation for Catholic sympathies at a time when Catholics were persecuted. St Wilfred's forms part of a group known as WSSM, that's the six churches in the four villages west of Ilkeston. These are West Hallam, Stanley, Stanley Common and Mapley. Churches traditionally were built on high ground, and there's certainly something to be said for the aesthetical benefit of that. As such, here's that view I was talking about. Check this out, people. This church has an outside toilet too, which looks fairly modern. Surprisingly, not many churches I've ever visited seem to have one, so it's something of a rare find, this. West Hallam's main war memorial is one of the best I've ever seen. This is a white marble statue of two soldiers manning a Vickers machine gun. Both are wearing 1914 pattern service dress. Right, all that's left to do now, on foot at least, is to walk through the main shopping area, which is over that way behind the punch bowl. The Punch Bowl is one of the two village pubs. There used to be three, but the White Hart was demolished in August 2020 to make way for four and five bedroom houses. Shops-wise, the village has the Dales Shopping Centre, which boasts a Tesco Express store, a chemist, and a few other shops. There's also two medical centres, a doctor's surgery, and a chiropractor found here. For larger supermarkets, of course, the nearest town is Ilkeston. I'd be quite happy with this though, to be quite honest. West Hallam is certainly served well enough to exist without relying too much on its much larger neighbour. In all, this has been a lovely hour and a quarter in one of Erewash's most populated areas. And we're not done yet either. one or two of the village locals just watching me take those last couple of shots wondering what I'm doing. I get that all the time. They didn't ask me but uh, I'm pretty sure that if they find the parish notice boards they'll see my, my card and hopefully see the results of my work. Anyway that's it we're done. We are fully around West Hallam and my car is parked down there on Nursery Avenue. We are completely round. Very residential place it does have some other landmarks as well doesn't it it's not totally uh, residential there are a few interesting bits now to finish this video off i'll be putting the camera on the dash and driving out towards the east just to catch the, the last little bit if you like of residential area because there's a long linear piece which runs to the east towards the motorway before i do that you guys need today's picture bit and there will be a picture bit in this one because there's an area i've not been able to get to here it comes right now
So to finish off, we're heading for an area called Straws Bridge. To do that, we need to drive down High Lane again. You'll note the name of the road here is slightly different. Earlier, we walked on High Lane West. Here, we're on High Lane Central, which then becomes High Lane East at the second of the two village pubs. That pub is the Newdigate Arms, and there's no prizes for guessing why it's called that. I couldn't fit this in earlier, but Sir Francis Newdigate was quite the man. He lived from 1862 until 1936 and was the final lord of the manor until the family parted ways with it in 1914. He also had a strong connection to Australia. He was the governor of Tasmania from 1917 to 1920 and then of Western Australia from 1920 until 1924. Now I've got some Australian followers. I wonder if the name Nudigate means anything to them. John Scargill, by the way, is buried in the chancel of St Wilfred's Church, with his stone now covered by the choir stalls on the south side. I'll just mention a bit about those cricket clubs while I have chance as well. West Hallam has two cricket clubs, neither of which the main route passed, but then again that's what picture bits are for. White Rose was founded in 1880, playing at the Statham Oval on Cat and Fiddle Lane. Nutbrook was founded in 1937, and they're based on the Arthur Fisher Memorial Ground on High Lane East. We're almost at Straws Bridge now, so I'll just let my driving do the rest of the talking. So as I spoke about earlier in the video, this is Straws Bridge and it's a very nice little pond at the uh, eastern end of West Hallam before we get into Ilkeston. A few uh, feathered friends here enjoying the water. There's a nice little picnic spot as well over here. There you go, you see some people enjoying the sunshine and as well they might, provided it doesn't start raining again. So I'm just going to have a little walk around here now and uh, finish this video off here I think. Straws Bridge is a valuable open space and recreational area which is on the border with Ilkeston. This is also known as Swan Lake and it's close to the disused Nutbrook Canal. It was formed from a flood meadow and the site of the old West Hallam sewage works in around 1990. So why is it called Straws Bridge? Well, there was literally a bridge over the Nutbrook Canal on the road from West Hallam to Ilkeston. It was originally known as Moores Bridge. In 1844, a man called Samuel Straw was employed as a canal overseer and he moved into the house right next to that bridge. From that time onwards, the bridge came to be known as Straws Bridge. And that's pretty much that folks, another one down in Erewash. What a lovely place to end this one here at Straws Bridge. Isn't it beautiful? Magnificent day and just a, a lovely little spot really. West Hallam folk, you are so lucky to have this right on your doorstep. Marvellous. Now we've only got five left to cover in Erewash. As far as I'm concerned, it only feels like the district started a few weeks ago. But that's the thing, when it's only got 14 parishes, you do get through it quite quick, I suppose. But yeah, there's five left, three big and two relatively small. So yeah, in the next five weeks, Every wash will be done. I do hope you're enjoying this series as much as I am. I've learned so much about this part of Derbyshire that I didn't know. And I'm sure there's plenty more which I will learn before I'm finished with it. This has been the parish of West Hallam and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot. I'm out. <laughs>